from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021. We're going to talk about the edge. Like what is the edge? How it's going to evolve? And we're going to take a look at an autonomous vessel use case, which is quite interesting. With me is Rob High, who's an IBM fellow, VP and CTO, IBM Edge Computing. Rob, welcome, it's great to see you again. Thanks Dave, appreciate that. Good seeing you too. Yeah, so let's start with the basic question here. You know, people say, well, what is the edge? Like it's one big thing and it's not, it's, it's many things, but how should we think about the edge and, and why should enterprises, you know, feel like it's necessary to begin to lean in? Well, so let's just start with the use cases. Uh, you know, I, what edge means is the ability to put a camera on a manufacturing floor, you know, perhaps juxtaposed with a robot, monitoring the work that the robot is doing, using AI visual recognition to detect whether what that robot is doing is producing high quality parts or not. And to be able to do that in real time, to be able to use that analytic then to, you know, quickly remediate any kind of quality issues, uh, helps lower cost, it helps increase your yield, and it helps increase the overall efficiency of your production processes. Or if not that, then putting it in something that's perhaps a little bit more familiar to us, the idea of an autonomous vehicle, you know, being able to, you know, drive and, and uh, do driver assistance, do driver safety kinds of features. You know, all of that requires compute and having that compute where people are actually performing these tasks based on the data that they're receiving at the moment that they receive it, being able to process that in real time, be able to give them the feedback that allows them to make better decisions, to be able to do that, not only with lower latency, but actually with better protection of their data, uh, better protection of their personal information or private information. If you're thinking about, you know, the business in which they operate, you know, be able to do that even when the network fails, be able to do that without necessarily having to transmit tons and tons of data back to the cloud, especially if you end up not actually using that anywhere. That's what edge computing really means. Yeah, so it sounds like the edge is, not, maybe we shouldn't think of it as a place, but the most logical place to process the data, uh, depending on latency and other factors. It's, uh, that's a good way to look at it. Um, so- it's, when, The edge is where we do our work. Yeah, where you do the work, right. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. So. You know, we always, we're talking about the pandemic changing the way we think about things. And, and I wonder if you can comment on, on the, the, the edge context as we come back uh, from you know, work from home or remote work. Uh, you know, think 2022, we hope is going to be face to face. <laughs> Could edge play a part in that? Has the pandemic uh, made you think differently uh, about the opportunities at edge? Yeah, and in fact, what we've seen is the pandemic is actually beginning to accelerate digital transformation. If you think about it, you know, any store that wanted to survive this pandemic could only do so by basically introducing a digital presence, you know, the ability to buy online. And even if you're picking up at the store, picking up the curbside, you know, you can't go into a restaurant without getting that QR code that gives you, you know, your digital menu. Um, trying to get workers back into both the factories as well as the warehouses and offices and to do so safely, be able to ensure that they're wearing their face masks and, and socially distancing properly. All of these things I think have driven digital transformation. And if you think about the task of, you know, buying online and picking up the store, well, stores better have a pretty good idea of where their inventory is. Um, they need to know exactly where that product is so they can quickly pick it and get it available to the client before they arrive at the store. Um, and so that's edge computing. We need edge computing to be able to, to automate the processes of in inventory tracking down to individual items and where they're located throughout the store to be able to do the recognition for whether people are or not maintaining their social distancing or wearing the PPE, um, to be able to ensure that our processes are as automated as possible to limit the amount of human interaction that's required in order to perform these processes. All of that, I think, has accelerated both digital transformation as well as particularly the use of edge computing uh, in, in all of our businesses. 
I think about you know the forced march to digital in 2020, and if you weren't a digital business, you were out of business. But to your, to my big takeaway from what you just said is the digital transformation is just starting, and now people really yeah. have some time to think about that that digital strategy. And, and and as we think about doing things, you know, more safely, maybe with less human intervention, we we love autonomous vehicles ex examples, just because because they're so technically they're challenging, but. But I wonder if you could tell us the story of the Mayflower autonomous ship. It's it's upcoming journey. It's going to be crewless ac across the Atlantic. Unbelievable, collecting data. It, you know, talk about how Edge relates. You know, to that story. What can you tell us? Well, first of all, let's just simply talk about the task of navigating a ship from one port on one side of the, of the world to uh, another port across the ocean, across the Atlantic. Um, you know, the ocean is a dangerous place. Uh, yes, it's wide open, it's, you know, lots of water, but the reality is it's full of barriers. Of course, you've got land barriers, you've got other ships, you've got marine life, you've got debris that gets uh, dropped in the ocean. And so the task of navigating is actually quite difficult. And again, to the same point that we've made earlier, you have to have local compute in order to really be able to make those decisions fast enough with enough acuity, with enough clarity, to be able to um, to be able to safely safely navigate around those kinds of obstacles, so we have to put compute in the ship. So the Mayflower ship is, as I sort of implied, uh, a, a ship that will be autonomous. There are no human beings involved in the, in operating the ship. It has to be able to on its own both recognize these obstacles, recognize another ship, recognize a boat, recognize um, you know, that cargo <laughs> uh, container that happened to have fallen off the, some other ship and it's floating through the ocean, you know, recognize you know, uh, marine life, uh, whales and other, other uh, fish and birds that might be uh, uh, on, in the way. Um, and, and, and to be able to um, do all that you know, entirely without any human invention. So that compute power is really a prime example of an edge computer. It is compute in the, in the business of navigation, uh, making decisions about um, the things that it sees and, and making decisions about how best to circumvent those issues. Um, now, along the way, I should also say, Part of what the Mary Flower ship is going to do is not only exercise the task of navigation and prove that um, these algorithms can efficiently and effectively uh, bring that ship from one side of the world to the other side safely, but along the way, it's going to conduct science. It's going to um, collect water samples for the um, chemical uh, makeup of, of the oceans at various points along the way. It's going to be sampling for microplastics or uh, examining phytoplankton for its health and liveliness. Uh, it's going to be the detecting wave motions and the wave energy that might be indicative of how the world is transforming in the presence of global climate change. Um, these science packages that are going to be performed are also being performed autonomously without any human intervention. And that actually opens up a very exciting potential future, which is the idea of these autonomous ships navigating the oceans, collecting data that can then be brought back for the scientists to examine so that they, the scientists, are not having to go out and spend weeks and months at a time in these perilous conditions, these potentially lonely conditions, um, collecting that data, but rather they can remain safely at land, the ship will collect the data, and they can um, analyze that data from their, their home labs. So this is actually a really exciting project, but one that I think will demonstrate not only the idea of edge computing, but also the advances in navigation and marine science. Yeah, because I mean, the ship has to, has to navigate itself. Not only is it bringing back data, but this is a great, great example. I mean, a lot of the work in machine intelligence today is done in, in the modeling side. This is, this, is, this is inference going on in near real time. Uh, which we think is where where the, the the action is. That's why we love the autonomous vehicles. There's a lot of IBM tech involved in here as well, is there not? I mean, you've got to have yeah, you know, right. software, and you've got your edge devices. You've got you know automation capabilities. I mean, it's not exactly <laughs> right. This is like serious technical challenge. 
Yeah, well, we were approached by the Primary team on this project, and it didn't take us long to realize the utility that some of our technology would have to advancing their project. And so you're right, I mean, we have things like uh, Operations Decision Management, ODM, which typically is used in the financial services industry, but now is being applied to the rules of navigation, what we call the coal regs. Um, we've got uh, our AI services that do visual recognition because obviously we've got to be able to detect and identify um, the things that, that the ship is seeing along the way and be able to distinguish what those things are. Uh, we have our IBM Edge application manager, which is being used to manage deployment of these kinds of workloads and frankly, all of the workloads that are hosted in the ship, getting that managed and deployed onto the ship. Uh, and, and of course, you know, all these things have to be integrated. And so that's just a small sampling of the kinds of technologies, but it's a good example of where I think the edge kind of represents the culmination of what we have all been working with in this industry, which is how do we bring technologies together to solve a problem as an integrated solution. You mentioned financial services, so I wonder if we can, you know, think, you know, beyond shipping, maybe uh, what what are you seeing in other industries? Are there any patterns that are developing where clients are saying, "Hey, we need this, sort of this capability"? W what can you tell us? So, edge computing is, is at its probably greatest demand right now in manufacturing. Uh, in industrial 4.0 uh, kinds of uh, environments where, you know, most of the industry, the industrial industries and markets have grown up largely dependent upon operations technology, OT. But one of the things that people need in these kinds of environments is the additional benefits that come from AI. And we've talked about, you know, using AI to do visual recognition on manufacturing processes, looking at quality inspection, for example, but you know, there's other aspects of production optimization of worker safety. We talked a little bit about that um, around uh, for, you know, predictive maintenance and asset management. Uh, you know, these kinds of additional things that are necessary to really to run your factory efficiently or your, you know, your uh, drilling rig or your energy production systems, all these kinds of industrial processes can benefit from the advances that are occurring in analytics in, um, in, and then of course having localized compute to do that with, to both do those kinds of decisions in real time, but also to offload the amount of transmission, the data that you end up transmitting back to the cloud. So industry 4.0 or manufacturing is, is one big area. Retail, we talked a little bit about that, but you think about you know point of sale terminals and the idea of being able to do offers at point of sale to be able to do uh, price checking, to help you navigate the stores, digital signage, um, you know, all the user experiences, spillage and spoilage and you know, loss prevention. These are all kinds of use cases that will benefit retail retailers. A um, lot of demand and of course, again, the need to be able to do that locally within the store. We talked and talk, touch a little bit on automotive. The whole automotive industry right now is going through a really fundamental transformation where virtually every automobile now is being imbued with more and more compute capacity and localized processing for doing driver safety and, and, and car maintenance and, and, and even short of you know, full autonomy, which is, of course is another topic in its own right. Uh, lots of experiences that can be brought there as well. So lots of opportunity in distribution, manufacturing, retail, banking, uh, uh, virtually every industry that we've looked at has some opportunity for um, leveraging the benefits of edge computing. Yeah, it's hard to get cars right now because the chip shortage, but um, I wonder real quick, if you could talk yeah. about 5G, you hear a lot about 5G, there's a ton of, tons of hype there. Uh, how should we be thinking about 5G? How real is it? W what's your take in terms of its impact on the edge? So a couple of thoughts here. One is 5G obviously is accelerating and it has the effect of accelerating edge computing because one of the benefits of 5G of course is lower latency and higher bandwidth. And that kind of opens people's minds to the potential to leverage the network connectivity of equipment that otherwise you know, is hard to connect. If you think about the factory floor for a moment and all the kinds of equipment you have on the factory floor, if you had to hardwire all that equipment to get access to the compute power on that, that could be a very expensive proposition. You'd like to kind of wirelessly connect that equipment. And that's one of the things that 5G brings to the table because some of the spectrum that 5G uses 
has less potential to interfere with that equipment than, than you would otherwise. So I think that what we're going to see is 5G will sort of disproportionately benefit, I'll call them industrial or commercial use cases, as compared to 4G and LTE, which were very much centered on consumer use cases. 5G is accelerating edge computing, and in many ways, 5G actually depends on edge computing. Doesn't mean that we can't do edge computing without 5G, we can. We can certainly do it 4G, LTE, even wireline. Uh, but I think 5G is going to have a very symbiotic effect on, on edge computing. Yeah, just like Wi-Fi was an enabler on mobile, but this is uh, you know much, much, much larger potential. Rob, we got to go. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing thank your you. insights. Love to have you back. Awesome seeing you. Thanks, Dave. All right. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching, Bye. everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2020-21. 2021, we'll be right back. <laughs>